to the 11th general body meeting. Um, if, just to make sure that we mark our attendance, please log into acm.uc.org slash c, or rather go to that and uh, fill up the attendance form. It takes like five seconds to do it. Uh, just so that you know, uh, this meeting is recorded and we'll upload um, this meeting on our YouTube soon. I had still had uploaded the last meeting. Um, things have been busy with RevUC, but hopefully I'll upload like both of these together. Um, and you can find these recordings and slides at acm.uc.org slash archive, but please, please, please fill up the attendance at acm.uc.org slash C. I feel I've said acm.uc.org so many times by now. Um, our mission is to encourage professionalism among tech enthusiasts in a collaborative fashion by facilitating learning beyond the scope of classrooms to develop innovative and inclusive ideas. So what that means is um, we kind of want to ensure that uh, all our members have access to learning things beyond the classroom, something that they generally would not learn in classrooms of UC and giving us access on those skills um, in a manner that uh, helps to develop ideas and work in an inclusive manner. Um, so what is ACM at UC? Um, the, it is the student chapter of Association of Computing Machinery, which is a national organization. Um, the way I like to say it is it's just a bunch of cool cool kids who are interested in tech coming together. Um, and it's a community built around computer science and programming. Um, most, of our, uh, most of our members are CS, IT, computer engineering, information system, electrical engineering, but we are open to all and every majors. All you need is a interest in computers, technology, or software. What do we do? Uh, we do a bunch of stuff, as you can see on the slides. Um, we have guest speakers and panels at our general body meeting. Um, we also do ICPC along with our advisor, Dr. John Franco. Um, we do Revolution UC, which is mostly what we'll talk about today. And we also do socials and review sessions. Um, some of our services are Slack community. We have Discord community. Um, we also record our meeting minutes and we also have office hours. Membership requirements. What does it take to be a member of ACM? All you have to do is attend two meetings and sign in. That's it. If you sign in, we know you've attended those meetings and you don't have to pay any ACM national. So if you're in this meeting, um, all you have to do is attend another one and that's it. You're a member. If you've previously attended one, then this is all you need. Code of conduct. Um, you've heard me say, oh, I guess all of this a whole bunch of times by now, but essentially we, we are dedicated to creating a harassment free experience for everyone and to just make sure that you're not mean or rude to anyone and you can find more information about it um, at acm.uc.org slash conduct. But essentially just be cool, be nice to everyone. It's not that hard. Um, some academic services that we provide. Uh, one of the bigger ones this semester will be review of code programming concepts in C++ because a lot of first year students take the C++ class. Um, and you can also check out our past talks on our YouTube. Most of them are recorded. Um, Last semester, we also did an intro to Python uh, for a review session because some students take a Python class with Dr. Fred Annexon, and they also teach Python in ENET. So we figured that'd be the best one to do. Um, office hours, we do review for tests, we do homework. Um, you can show off your code, our Hangout, or any project that we're working on. Um, they're usually virtual and in our office, but usually after the meeting, we just hang out over here because it's so much easier. Um, if you haven't yet, please join our Slack, probably one of the best ways to stay engaged with us. Um, you can do that at acmcnc.slack.com slash sign up. Um, and you sh it should also be in every single email that Daniel sends. Um, and cool thing is it's available on desktop and mobile and code of conduct applies on Slack for basically all our virtual platforms. And another, uh, another community that we have is Discord. It's more casual conversation, um, and we also do some social events there, but as, but um, it is open, or like you get the same information on Slack on, and on Discord. Uh, we usually send out the same information or same messages there, um, be it about our social office hours or Slack, but uh, we do use Discord for our office hours. So if you haven't yet, scan that QR code to join our Discord. Um, quick announcement, ACM did have its birthday on February 13th. ACM is officially 42 years old, I think, from my calculations. Uh, that means ACM is twice, woohoo. Uh, 
ACM is exactly twice my age. Um, and it's 22, 22 years older than Kartike. Um, and that means ACM is legally allowed to drink alcohol, but Kartike still is it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, and then now here's what all of you came from for Hackathon 101. Um, again, if you haven't yet, just log or uh, sign in or like fill up the attendance sheet on acmatuc.org. We've had a couple new members come in, uh, so please make sure that you fill that form out and register your attendance. But Hackathon 101, essentially just intro to Hackathon, kind of knowing what a Hackathon is, especially if this is your first one. It is a 24-hour event, so there is a lot to expect. Um, and so we just kind of want to give you a prep on what to expect, what to do, what not to do and how to ensure that you have your best hackathon experience. So first of all, what is a hackathon? Well, um, hackathon doesn't need to be 24 hours, but usually those are 24 hours. And um, think about it as a marathon, but for coding. So you're working 24 hours straight on a project with a team of one to four people. If it is just one person, it's probably you. That's not a team. But um, it, is, it is encouraged to be working in a team. The more people you have, the better project you can make. But some people like to just uh, fly solo. And if that's you, that's completely OK, too. If you just want to have the entire project to yourself, get all the prizes to buy, buy yourself as well, it's completely fine. Um, but if you are working in a team, it's way, way easier to be um, coming up with a lot bigger project. Uh, you, get, you do get to practice and learn new skills. So if there's ever a technology that you've thought was like, Damn, that's actually kind of cool. I want to know more about it, but never have had the chance or the time to work on it. This is your chance. Um, try to pick up or work on a project with that technology because you have a bunch of mentors, you have sponsors, and you have a lot of people that can either help you or also guide you. And you also have an audience that you can showcase what you've worked on. And let's face it, we all love the validation that we get from other people whenever we work hard on something. Uh, but there's more incentive as well. You get a bunch of free stuff. Uh, you get prizes. We have so, so many tracks. We have first, second, third prize, and then we have a bunch of other tracks as well that we release uh, at the day of. And then our sponsors also um, have prize categories and MLH, they also have their own prize categories. So there's so many opportunities to win prizes. And even if you don't get those, uh, we still provide you guys free swag, um, either by either by mailing or by pickup. So if nothing, you at least get those free swag. And um, it's super fun. So come excited, um, give it your full energy, be ready to hack and to learn. Um, and PSA, Hackathon does not involve hacking usually, but we do have a capture of the flag. So it does involve a little bit of hacking, but it's not built around Hackathon for sure. Um, so, well, I've talked a lot about Revolution UC as well by now, but um, what is Revolution UC? It is UC Student Run Hackathon. Us people at ACM, uh, most of us help organize the Revolution UC, and it is a part of ACM, one of the biggest things that we do. Um, I've been talking about this for like past six, seven, eight, probably nine meetings, but um, it is on February 26, 27, so not this weekend, but the coming weekend. So mark your calendars with it and make sure if you haven't yet, please go register on revolutionuc.gov slash register. Um, you get to connect with sponsors, get to meet a lot of other attendees who are working on cool stuff just like you are and 24 hours of everything that I mentioned before. Um, if you Also, if you aren't, please follow us on Twitter and Instagram, which is revolution, revolution underscore uc and revolution.uc. We also have a new TikTok, so if you sign up, you could probably see like the social media icons at the end of your emails, and we also have TikTok on there. So that is a new platform that we're trying out uh, this semester or this year. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a huge TikTok over Reels person because it's just like so much better algorithm. So um, definitely a follow us on TikTok as well. Oh, wow, I've been talking a lot, but um, how to succeed at a hackathon? Um, well, I, I understand my, can, by show of hands, can people tell me um, if it's your first hackathon that you'll be attending this next weekend? Oh, oh sweet, we have no first hackathon uh, attendees. 
what? That's right. Uh, it is, I don't think anyone over here, uh, anyone on Teams is also, has also attended the hackathon before. Oh, like I have attended hackathon before. Uh, and a few shillers and then I have. I actually don't know if Bob has. Bob, have you attended a hackathon before? Me, I don't know the events, so it's not like participated in any, like, it's not coded or something, just went for it. Oh, really? Yeah. As in, um... The events or something, I mean, like, there were the special guests, it worked for, like, making sure I had the Oh, like, yeah, I've never ended any workshops or social yeah. events or anything? Okay. Um, I did register for revolution, you see? Awesome. Well, uh, we do. I uh, like one of the things that I think Revolution UC does great is like our social events and our workshops. So we have so many of them lined up, and I'll talk a little bit about them later too. So definitely um, attend those also. But thanks for letting me know. Uh, awesome. Well, even if it is your, um, even if you have attended a hackathon before, it's definitely nice to know a little bit more about how we can succeed at a hackathon from someone who's been organizing hackathons for a while, um, which is a lot of us in this room and even on the call. Um, but definitely try to learn something new or you can also refine your current skills. Uh, I remember my first hackathon is I worked on a web application. I was a freshman at that time. I like barely knew anything about coding except for probably C++ and a little bit of Python. Um, but I worked with someone who like knew a lot about web development and um, they, taught, they got me a little bit into web development and this is what I do for my co-ops now as well. Um, so definitely be open to trying something new um, or something that you really have interest in. Um, try to refine your current skills because we have so many people who are experts, industry professionals who work with the skills that you probably want to develop. Um, and so this is such a great platform to quickly jumpstart those skills. Um, which leads me to the next point is, Take advantage of our sponsors. We have so many sponsors. We have, spon come, we have uh, mentors from Fifth Third, 8451, MedPace, all these great companies which are in Cincinnati itself. And um, they they have so much experience working in industry. They do this for a living. And so you can probably imagine that um, they're so good at it. So definitely ask sponsors for advice. One thing that I feel like people hesitate a lot, um, I know I have hesitated in the past, is asking for questions. Um, even sometimes you may feel like, oh, this isn't like a good enough question to ask, or oh, I'm just being dumb. And so that's why I don't want to embarrass myself by asking these mentors any questions. Don't do that. These mentors are here uh, for you. They want to help you. And so they understand that you only have 24 hours and you don't want to spend like six hours debugging something that they would have debugged in like two minutes and this way you not only save six hours right now but you also save six hours every time in the future because now you know how to debug that thing and so that's why i'd say definitely ask for questions no question is dumb um, another quick story is one hackathon that Piyush and i did together hack ohio Piyush has so many questions to the microsoft uh, mentor that uh, we had at, at that hackathon and i'm pretty sure even the Piyush would not admit it but Les and I are convinced that one of the reasons that we won a prize was because Fuse was so engaged with that mentor. So it's a great way to network with them as well. And that this is one of the ways they know what project you're working on. And that is something that they want to know. Um, so do take advantage of that. Another is free resources. We provide so many softwares and keys and public APIs. We have Google Cloud credits. Um, from what I've seen so far, uh, MLH, also provides Twilio credits and um, there's so many GitHub stuff, GitHub student pack. We provide a list of all those free softwares at the day of the hackathon, so make sure you make use of those. Um, and this way you don't have to pay anything and you also know a bunch of different resources that you probably could have used, um, but just didn't because you weren't aware of it. So take time, take five, 10 minutes, kind of see what those, what free resources are provided. And last but not the least, um, I've talked a little bit about this before, but do, I think it's highly encouraged to work in a team. Uh, if you don't have a team, we provide resources, something that you should talk a little bit about later, which is Lattice. Um, this is one of the ways to form a team. Another is we also have team formation event. 
So you can also join that to form a team. Um, and sometimes I feel it can be nerve wracking to be in a team with someone that you haven't met or worked with before from with a complete stranger. But I say it's still highly encouraged because A, you make a new friend who sticks by you for the next 24 hours. And you also learn how to work in a team setting where you don't know anyone because that's what's likely going to happen at your first day of co-op because you won't know your co-workers and that's a great way to um, great way to know how to make those quick those connections real fast. Um, and we understand that our hackathon being completely virtual can make it hard sometimes to work in a team setting. So try from your end to make sure you're as good as communicating as you can be. Um, more communication is always better. This I've no, I've learned that there's no such thing as lack, like there's no such thing as too much communication. Um, sometimes if you want, literally just hop on a call with them and work with them for like five hours. Even if you're quiet this whole five hours, it's still helpful to just kind of know that they're they're right there if you want to ask the question and not have to like worry or worry about like ordering your teammates to um, ping them and ask the question. So um, definitely try try to ensure that good communication from your side as well. And hopefully that also encourages your teammates to uh, reciprocate your communication. Next is don't be afraid to pivot. Um, I just don't always work out. Whenever you are in that ideation stage of your project, you'll come up with so many ideas. You probably have like 15 different things and are ready to just change the world. But you have to understand that you only have 24 hours and things may not always work out. So find a way to leverage your current project into a new project. Um, kind of see what you've worked on so far and how you can use that uh, to move directions. And also look for ways to rework your idea to conform to restrictions. One of the biggest restrictions I think in a hackathon is the time because even if you do stay up 24 hours straight, which is not recommended, I think you should probably take a nap. But hey, if you if you just like had too many Red Bulls or monsters, whichever you prefer, um, I won't judge. No one else will either. But it still isn't enough time, even if you stay up this whole 24 hours. So I think sometimes you do have to rework your ideas, confirm to restrictions, and there might be a bug that shows up. You just realize that this isn't possible with the technology that you're working on. And so be always be always be open to um, changing directions. And again, something that comes into play again, what I talked about before, is communicating that with your team. Um, keep keep your team in constant communication and keep reworking those uh, fine details with them. Try not to make decisions all by yourself. And another thing which we've talked about before is have fun. Obviously, the hackathon is a great place to learn new skills and blah, 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 all that fancy stuff that we've talked about before. But at the end of the day, you're just here to have fun. Um, it is a super long event because it takes up a whole weekend. And so you want to make sure that you kind of have some relaxing time as well. And we make sure of that. Uh, we have fun events like Bob Ross painting. We also have a new Minecraft contest that we've not done before on our very own ACM server. So it's going to be super, super, super fun. Uh, we've not done this before, so I'm not entirely sure how it's going to play out, but I'm so confident and so excited about this event. Um, we also have captured the flag contest that's done by Saber at UC along with Northrop Grumman. Um, you get to win a lot of prizes, not just by hacking, but also by attending these events. Um, so we do, we have like, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but we have fun stuff planned for you guys. And you can, you can win more prizes just by attending these events. So you can also show, show off your setup. Usually if you're like, um, usually if you're in an in-person hackathon, all you have is your laptop. But if it is a virtual hackathon, you got, you have your whole computer set up with like your monitor, your LED filled, uh, CPU, um, your speakers and all of that fancy jazz. So show it off, send a message in one of the Discord channels um, and tell people like, hey, I have a pretty cool setup. And hopefully people do the same and you can get inspiration from other people. Uh, we also have APIs, guides, and free softwares, like I mentioned before. There's so many resources for you to use and we provide you a list of all the useful resources, um, either after the meeting or the day of Hackathon, but you'll definitely receive them the day of Hackathon as well. Things like, how to get started on a node application or other free software that MLH provides, or the free software that we're providing. 
things like those. But um, do you guys have any favorite tools or things that you like to work on or would like to work on in the hackathon? Do you, have, do you have any favorite tools? Anything. What's that? Google Docs. Google Docs. What you can do is just share the link and everyone just types down their ideas. That's, that's, that's a good, no, that's a good one. I feel like, what? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Firebase is so, I know they do, like Firebase is used mostly for web apps, right? You can also use for Android. For Android apps, nice. Yeah, yeah I've, heard, I've heard so much about Firebase. And um, yeah, Google Docs too. I know it's like so simple, but it can be so make make life so much easier. Is there is there any skill that the two of you not not to call you out, but uh, is there any particular skill that you guys are looking forward to learning? Um, I really like revert photos. And I was uh, doing that for a while. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. It's really interesting seeing all the cool APIs and cool things. Yeah. True, true. Um, but I guess I think like this talk is mostly. I don't know if someone from the chat has said anything. Oh, not yet. Um, but there's like a bunch of software that um, MLH provides, and I can open this real quick. Um, they have they have a blockchain application that you can use for a social app. Um, they also have Twilio, Coil, Auth O for privacy and security. Um, they also give you a free one year of domain name, which is pretty cool. Um, Hundred credits of Linode, and they also give you a bunch of GitHub stuff. Um, they give you Google Cloud credits, Cockroach DB, um, GoDaddy registration for a year, so you can get two domains if you need them for anything. Um, you also get three months of MATLAB because um, I know some some of you probably have to use that for um, Ened. I know you probably have bought it already, but if you want to cancel that, feel free to cut the card. You have to use MATLAB as well. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. Um, and then I don't know what Hidera is, um, or I also don't know what Circle CI is, but it looks like Circle CI is continuous integration and. Um, That's pretty nice. Um, I remember in one of the hackathons that I participated, um, one of my team worker teammates was working on CI/CD with Azure, and I remember them having to spend like so much time on it. But um, it's definitely nice to have these resources, and hopefully it makes it makes that part of the coding easier, so you can do like more things in less time. Uh, hack ideas. Um, where can you look for inspiration for hack ideas? I would say looking into past revolution UC submissions is definitely a big one. Um, oh. let, me, let me see if I can find the correct one. I think it was spring of 2018 where someone made, if I can't find it, I'll probably just explain it, but I remember one of the participants, what they did was create a um, application that would uh, and this is like, I think four or five years ago, but what they did was made an application where you can send memes or like a daily meme on your chat automatically with your friends. So I, I, from how much I recall, they also used an AI. So they would kind of, the AI would kind of like read all your text and then find the best memes or like the best meme format and things like that for specifically your group chat, which I thought was so cool because uh, memes have definitely grown so much. And we've also had, I think a couple of years ago, the last in-person hackathon that we had, we had one team who took a old DVR player and they turns that into a whole, whole ass toaster, which is so cool. But they had to do the testing outside. So they like went out in the cold just to make toast and record that video, uh, which was one of the fun projects that we've had. Uh, so definitely check these out. There's so many cool stuff uh, in our past submissions. Uh, and, and now do this. The way you can do is just go to Revolution UC and you can see like all the past submissions right here on the home page by clicking on this. Um, 
You can also go to revolutionnewsc.com slash hack idea. So we provide that on our uh, web page itself, and you can kind of get to see all the different routes that you can take with your um, project. You can either do something in healthcare or education or sustainability, um, or you can do community or social good or cyber security um, and some other miscellaneous stuff as well that isn't covered in any of these. Um, another thing you can do is think about the technology that you want to use, skills that you want to learn and think of an idea based around that. Uh, we can also think about the skill sets, skill sets of people on your team and see which ones you complement and what you can do with those technologies and skills. Um, another thing is problems that you see in your world, something that either has caused you inconvenience, a problem that you faced, and you think you can come up with a solution, uh, go for it. Even if you fail, which like you have done for hours, but you gave it a shot and um, you're not being judged whether on based on the fact that you solved the problem or not, but how hard you tried, what new skill you learned, and if the sponsors or that price category has any different criteria. Um, another is Lattice. Definitely use the Lattice app to find teammates, and sometimes you can just work on the idea that your teammate has. So if, you, if you're going through Lattice and you like someone's idea a lot, um, definitely match with them and ask them, can, can I work, on, work with you on this project? Because um, it can be hard to come up with a idea, and if you resonate a lot with someone else's, there's no harm in just working with them on it. Next is a Lattice demo. So you can share his screen and do a quick Lattice demo. Uh, if you guys don't know what Lattice is, Lattice is a application that our web team has created um, last year, and it's essentially just Tinder, but for hackathon matching, so you can kind of find other participants on Lattice, and uh, you can swipe left and right uh, if you want a teammate. My stop. Right. I can see you, right? Okay. Cool. So uh, this is the Lattice homepage. So first of all, in order to get into Lattice. You have to uh, register for RevUC, and then the first, the second info email that you'll get from RevUC is the one which has the lattice invite. So it's not, it's not like you can just go to the website and sign in. It's, it's so that it's protected only for hackers. So um, when you when you log in, you'll be able to create your profile like I have right now. I can go to edit profile. Um, Choose my so choose my name, project idea, whatever project I want to work on. It's just a preliminary idea right now. You don't have to like specify exactly what you're working on. It's just to get an idea of what kind of teammates you're looking for. Then you can uh, set your skills, what skills you have, and choose what skills you're looking for in your potential teammate. And then the Discord tag. The Discord tag is uh, useful because all of you will be on Discord, whoever is participating in WC. So you hit save, um, save your profile, and then you can mark your uh, account visible, go to the home page, and there's everyone. You can either swipe left or swipe right on your potential team. I'm not going to do it because I'm not a hacker. I'm just here for <laughs> testing purposes. But yeah, you can, you can choose. Uh, your, it's, it's just like Tinder. And so when when two of you swipe right on each other, you'll be able to go to notifications, and then here you'll have a list of all your matches, and then their Discord uh, IDs. And so you can just go to the, uh, that Discord ID on, on Discord in our server, and then start talking with them. And if you, if you, if you end up like, Having the same mentality or the same project, then you can you can work on your team, uh, work on the project together. So yeah, that's Lattice. Awesome, thanks, Piyush. Uh, does anyone have any questions on Lattice? All right. Uh, if not, we can go ahead and continue with the rest of our presentation, which shouldn't be too long. Um, but. Does anyone have any questions on Hackathon or Revolution UC so far, or anything that we've talked about today? 
now. All right. Uh, so just to close things off, what do you want to see this year for the uh, like for the rest of the semester? If you have any ideas for uh, this year, if you have any talks, workshops, or any socials that you're looking forward to, definitely come talk to us, and we can make that happen. Um, go to our go to our sibling organizations, um, IEEE, ACMW, um, UC Women in Technology, and IT Student Association. These are all organizations that share similar um, interest and uh, uh, share similar interest with us. So if you like being in ACM, definitely try joining these as well. Um, they're a great platform and they've been doing a lot of great stuff as well. Um, if you're interested in leading a talk or workshop, come talk to me. Um, when our last meeting was actually hosted by, um, by one of the IEEE execs as well as a member of ACM and Revolution UC, Nishil, and he gave a talk about machine learning, uh, who is a UC student. So. Um, if there's a skill that you want to show off and teach other students as well, definitely come talk to us and we can make that happen. Um, upcoming events, uh, there are a lot of events, but the only one I want to focus on, and this is me being selfish, but for fair reasons, is Revolution UC, which is next weekend, not this weekend, but the weekend after. Um, so I'm excited to see all of you here um, and at Revolution UC. So thank you so much for coming. If you haven't yet, please register your attendance at acm.uc.org. Um, we'll stick around for a few more minutes and feel free to grab some more snacks for those who are in person um, and those who are not, um, which is um, Liz, I don't know why you're not, but Daniel, um, just saying, could have come in person and had these sweet, sweet snacks. <laughs> what did you say, Daniel? Oh, rip. Okay. Well, I'm going to hop off this call, but thanks so much for joining virtually as well. Peace out, homies. <laughs>